I'd like to share one of the stories that come out of one of the books I have written in the past, not too long ago. Uh, true story comes out of my own personal life. When I was single, uh, attending a United Methodist Church in Catani, Pennsylvania, where mom took us. And uh, by the way, mom took us kids to so <laughs> she took us kids to so many churches. She couldn't find a perfect one for us. Maybe it's because when we walked in or something. But uh, anyhow, this story comes out of the United Methodist Church congregation. And uh, it's, it's titled, What Uncle Willie's Glass Eye Could See. What Uncle Willie's Glass Eye Could See. And I'll just read it to you, it's real short, but I think we need our eyes open this hour to see what God sees, to see what God's doing behind the scenes of our life, of our nation, on the earth. I, I believe if we could see what God sees, uh, I believe we would agree with him, not what the devil's doing, but what God is allowing for good. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Uh, even gross darkness, God wants us to see what he sees in it. I believe God sees great treasures. If we keep focused on him, uh, the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And we'll see with God's eyes, great treasure coming forth out of great darkness. I really sense that strongly today. Anyhow, I just wanna read this short story, it's true. Uh, we called him Uncle Willie, a little old man who sat near the front of the church so he could hear the worship and the message. At times, the spirit of the Lord would come upon Uncle Willie, causing his frail body to shake and his eyes to weep. Uncle Willie's glass eye intrigued everyone. I'm convinced some came to church just to see it. When he began to shake and weep, his glass eye would often pop out. And if you watched real close, you could see him catching it in his hands. He would then tilt his head back as though nothing unusual happened and roll the glass eye back into place. We soon discovered Uncle Willie could see better than any of us. It happened when a young boy drowned in our hometown river. The river was searched for days without closure for the grieving family. Uncle Willie mentioned to someone, I know where that body is. I can see it in the bottom of that river. Word got to the parents and spread quickly to the rescue team. They helped Uncle Willie into a boat and started moving out on the water. Willie's crackling voice steered the rescue team in spite of the boat filling up with doubt. Finally, further downstream, Willie pointed, the body is right down there. The body is right down there. The doubtful crew threw the weighted hook and sure enough, it hooked the little boy's body. A tainted, saddened cry of relief and wonderment was heard by those on shore including the parents. Recently, I was recalling this story about Uncle Willie and I said, oh God, how we all need eyes to see like Uncle Willie. Uh, Uncle Willie saw things that nobody else in that congregation saw in that region. He saw where the body was in that river at the bottom. And Lord, I just pray today that you would open our eyes to see as you see treasures in darkness, drowning people, uh, people are drowning in their sins and transgressions, lost to never be found. But God, you've come to seek those that are lost. You've come to seek them through us, your body, or your hands and legs now, Lord. But we need your eyes to see clearly what, what you see in people that we don't see. Lord, I'm, I believe you see good in everybody. That's just the way you are. You saw the good in us when, uh, when we were yet sinners. You saw something good because that's what, that's what moved you to die on the cross. While we were yet sinners, you died for us. 
So you saw something in us when we were worthless. You always see the good because you, you thought us up. Before we were born, you thought us up and said, I, I love this, I love Bill. I love, I, love, I love these people I'm creating. They have great purpose, great purpose and destiny in my kingdom and in this world. So Lord, I, we just ask you today, even show us ourselves as you see us, as that we can even love you and love ourselves in order to love others. I thank you, Lord, give us your eyesight. Anoint our eyes with your eyes salve today. Let us see what Uncle Willie could see in the bottom of that river, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just read that short story from my one of my recent books, Some Hear Thunder, I Hear a Roar. Uh, Uncle Willie's testimonies in there, other stories. This book was dedicated to my mother. Many of you have this book. It's through Amazon. And dedicated to my mother, of course. She. Uh, many of my mother's miracles and healings are in this book. Uh, she attended Kathleen Coleman meetings in Pittsburgh, PA, when she was 11 and she saw miracles and healings that gave her a gift of faith that lasted her 90 years. She survived sickness, disease, and infirmity because when, she, because when you see a miracle, you no longer believe in miracles, you live by them. And that's what she did. And her faith caused healings to run down through the family tree. I've had healings. My sister has had healings. Uh, just w when, you, when you believe in healing, you're believing for your whole household that's going to run through the veins of every family member down to the next generation to come and generations from then on too. I want to encourage you today. Uh, one, of the, one of the unusual things my mother requested when she left this world at 90 years of age, she told us kids, hey, uh, by the way, uh, when I leave this world, I want you to tell the undertaker uh, because mom had an upper taker. <laughs> she was getting excited to leave this world, I tell you. So anyhow, she said, tell the undertaker that I don't want any shoes or socks put on my feet because I want to dance in the streets of gold in my bare feet. So, <laughs> so after mom went to be with Jesus, the next day I called the funeral director and said, hey, my mother has an unusual request from, for you. She said to tell you that she doesn't want you to put any shoes or socks on her because she wants to dance in the streets of gold in her bare feet. He said, okay, if that's what she wanted. So, uh, so he honored that. You know, at God's, at my mother's celebration party, uh, somebody came up and said, you know, like people do, they said, uh, Brother Bill, it's gonna be very hard to fill your mother's shoes. I said, honestly, she doesn't have any. She's dancing on the streets of gold in her bare feet. She went barefooted to heaven. And I believe she's still dancing. Many years ago, she went to be with Jesus, but I just sense I could see her dancing on the streets of gold. There's no time up there, so who knows? Uh, she's just having a great time. And uh, at the celebration party, uh, I felt led to share with people. I could not hear my mother's personal voice, but I, I felt impressed that she was telling me. She said, Bill, I can't describe what's up here. You're gonna to have to come see it for yourself. Whatever you do, make sure you get up here because it's awesome. It's beyond words. There's no words it can tell. It's like, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. It, was just, it would take a thousand tongues to describe in one minute what this place is like. Don't miss it for the world. So I want to encourage you, uh, Mom's testimonies in this book, Some Hear Thunder, I Hear a Roar, on Amazon. My other four books are on there too. So I just want to encourage you today. God wants to open our eyes to see people as he sees them. Even our enemies, must he must see something good or he wouldn't say love them. And I know you have a testimony just like me. Some of my past enemies have become my greatest uh, encouragers 
even in ministry. So we can't write off anybody, especially um, since God saved us. He can save that person. You don't think he can save because he, 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 he specializes in saving souls because he saved us. God bless you today. Be encouraged. Uh, God, just open our eyes today to see what you see and hear what you hear in Jesus' name.